The Burmese people need to know that the courage they're demonstrating today and what they're fighting for uh, is being watched by people all over the world, that we admire what they are attempting to achieve and that we stand in awe of their commitment and of their courage. The United Nations, ASEAN, India, and especially China must stand with the United States in solidarity with the Burmese people. And all of us must not fail the people of Burma again. I yield the floor. We've all talked about the need to get this adequate diplomacy going. And that is a central component of this sense of the Congress resolution that Senator Biden is introducing. We all know that we can't impose a solution on the Iraqis, and, and, and this does not do that. We all know that we can't just walk in and divide the country up. This does not do that. This respects the sovereignty of Iraqis, and it respects the notion that Iraq is right now a failing state with a barely functioning central government that has not to date proven its capacity to be able to reconcile the fundamental differences that the civil war is being fought over. Um, much of uh, what this amendment uh, we're hopefully going to vote on uh, is about are things that the senator and I have talked about for the last four years and that he has led on. Uh, it adds some international credibility to it because an awful lot of people around the world have looked to my colleague uh, for his insights into what we do about the most critical issue facing American foreign policy today. So I just want to thank my colleague uh, and acknowledge that I have, uh, I have learned from him uh, and, uh, um, and I want to thank him for his, uh, I know we use the phrase very blithely around here, thank him for his leadership, but I really mean that. I want to thank him for his leadership. He has been absolutely, totally consistent on this point from before the time we actually used force in Iraq to today. So I just want the record to reflect.